So hey, what is up everybody? It's the AI Wither show <laughs> part three and I have uh, I have John here and we're ready to chat about AI and all sorts of exciting things. Hey, so um, why don't we start John? You just talk a little bit about yourself, some backstory, like what are you about? Uh, sure. Well, no, it, it's nice to finally be able to chat uh, after after uh, after uh, messaging for so long. So I've been, yeah. I've, been, uh, uh, I've been in technology for about thirty years. I uh, have been a part of starting a couple of companies and been the CTO. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, recently decided I would try a retired or a semi-retired life. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I also uh, spent most of my college career doing image processing. When I saw all the cool stuff that was happening. Uh, with uh, uh, deep neural networks, I said, okay, that's mm -hmm. new. So probably spent the last six months dabbling with that, uh, mm -hmm. as you and I have kind of explored uh, yeah. Darknet and, uh, uh, and MXNet and a couple other things. So, uh, uh, so yeah, I'm just, uh, just a tech guy, just kind of doing my thing, living in the uh, uh, outskirts of Seattle. So, uh, uh, and enjoy just tracking AI stuff and, you know, uh, nothing... Uh, uh, you know, it's it's just a it's just a really cool technology to be able to experiment with right now. Yeah, one hundred percent. I agree with that. So, um, can you kind of talk about like you've been like for thirty years in technology? <laughs> That's more than I've been alive. <laughs> so, uh, so, <laughs> so maybe you, you you could like you know paint some pictures like about your journey and where you like been going. You've mentioned uh, being a part of starting companies, being still like you excite me with your with your hints on what you've been doing. So why yeah. don't we go sure. a little bit into that? Anyway, I, I was uh, 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 went to college uh, uh, in uh, actually Louisiana and got uh, a bachelor's and a, a master's degree in computer science and. Uh, Pretty much uh, in those in, in uh, did a lot of in those days image processing, which was really just uh, you know fairly low level image imaging, uh, contrast enhancement, edge detection stuff like that, uh, and spent about the next thirty years uh, building uh, enterprise software. Uh, mm -hmm. And along the way, uh, uh, we before we knew what the cloud was, I ended up working for a company or, or being a, a CTO of a company that built uh, online travel and expense solutions for businesses and uh, uh, we ended up selling that company to another company that did the same thing here in Seattle and uh, uh, continued to work there and uh, uh, it recently got sold to uh, SAP so uh, it was uh, it was a really uh, exciting ride uh, you know mm -hmm. to, uh, I, I, to, and to how, and, like, and like how long ago was that was that? Oh, that was uh, started the company in '99, sold the company okay. in 2006, and then uh, uh, and then uh, sold the company again in uh, 2014. So uh, uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was it was it was a long time <laughs> before. Yeah, so uh, uh, no, it, it's uh, it's uh, but yeah, we uh, we got we were in the cloud business at the right time for sure. <laughs> Since then, I've worked in another startup uh, and uh, then decided, well, let's try out uh, eh, being retired or semi-retired or whatever, but got to keep doing technical stuff. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. And like 99 through 2014, yeah, um, a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of stuff has changed with the advent of the, I mean, yeah, with the advent of the internet, smartphones, you know, and uh, have that kind of... You know, how did that affect like like were you thinking about where the technology technology was going like were you like seeing you know at that time like kind of did you have like we thoughts were, on where it was going we, we were we were thinking about it but it was uh it, you, nobody i don't think i don't think we had a, a vision that it would uh how how uh cloud infrastructure would evolve right we when we started our business uh you had to have your own racks in a data center and build your mm -hmm. own servers and uh, there wasn't. Uh, there was a little bit of open source technology, but there wasn't containerization technology. There wasn't uh, uh, highly distributed document database technology. Yeah. So uh, it was. You know, you basically had to use enterprise level tools and ex and extend their scale to uh, to uh, to multiple enterprises or to cl or the cloud, right? And in those days, companies were much more comfortable having a land room with their own technology versus mm -hmm. using 
you know, something over the internet, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, it was, uh, it, there was a whole lot that had to change and certainly uh, internet security was one of those things that had to grow up along with it. So uh, it was, uh, it was the wild, wild west for a while and well, heck it still is. But nowadays mm-hmm. you've got, you know, containers, you've got managed services mm-hmm. uh, that, you know, you, they're, they're, there's infrastructure that, uh, that you can spin up in, in Amazon within, you know, a couple of minutes that, uh, you know, and, and use for, for pennies an hour, right? It's just amazing. Mm-hmm. So, so, and you were doing something with the cloud, like what product were you like building that back uh, then? Uh, the, the product that we built uh, is uh, for online travel and uh, and doing expense reports, right? When you when you work for business, you know, a large part of, you know, there's a whole lot of travel involved. So you've got to mm-hmm. be able to book and previously to, you know, about, you know, in that, you know, before 99, you call somebody and uh, uh, online travel was just emerging uh, in the mm-hmm. consumer space and had begun to emerge in the business space. So we kind of rode that wave uh, to build online travel. And then once you're done traveling, you got to, uh, you got to turn in an expense report, which used to be on paper, and mm-hmm. uh, and and obviously it made sense to uh, to automate that electronically. So uh, uh, yeah, when when we started, it was uh, it was far from a uh, it was far from a a, a, a a clear win. I remember a guy with a bow tie telling us, "You'll never be able to get <laughs> travel agents." And, uh, and you know, I thought, well, that's why he's wearing a bow tie. So, but. Uh, you know, we uh, uh, we were able, we were at the right place at the right time, and uh, con- the name of the product was called ClickBook, and now it's called Concur Travel. Uh, that supported SAP. So uh, uh, it was a, uh, uh, it was just a, the, again, a, a great team of people the whole yeah. time, and uh, a really, uh, you know, it was just the the product, the the space was a green field. So. Mm-hmm. So, so you were working with those like business trips when a company gotta send someone to like go. You know, travel somewhere, and you were like, yeah. or you were like helping to automate like the expenses and you know the expenses that come in and stuff like that. Correct. The whole, the whole process, right? We the would connect process. to the reservation systems, pull back air availability. You know, we would, mm-hmm. uh, and almost all companies have uh, have uh, or at the time had uh, discounted fares. You know, we mm-hmm. would, okay, you know, a big company travels a lot and they would negotiate uh, discounts that you just couldn't get uh, uh, through other means. And we mm-hmm. would apply the discount and we would, you know, we would offer them hotels and we knew where their company liked to stay and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then all that data would flow back into an expense report. So you didn't have to, uh, uh, you didn't have to chase around and, and, and run down a bunch of receipts and all that stuff. So uh, it, it was, it, it was a, a it was again the right thing at the right time, and we ended up, uh, uh, you know, we started, you know, U.S. based, and ended up, uh, you know, pretty much booking travel in, you know, in every in every every country in the world. So it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And so, and so um, when you were like in '99, uh, trying to pitch the idea to you know to people, and you know, you were probably just starting out to like build some something like. Uh, like what? Like what was it like to you know be building something in '99 and then like knocking on companies' doors saying that like we, we've got a product to help each other? Like how were you like convincing and building like all, all at the same time? Well, that's where good salespeople come in. <laughs> but no, we were okay. building the product and and working with customers uh, to understand their needs and requirements as we went. And you know when you then you 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 also had to have travel uh, mm-hmm. travel agencies that were partners. And when you worked with a really good travel agency partner, they would then uh, refer you to their other business, you know, other the business their business customers. So mm-hmm. you were able to build a network. Uh, it was uh, uh, it took a, a, a lot of people uh, and a whole lot of selling to uh, to get them to accept it because in some places, you know, you were you know it was it was getting people. It was like uh, uh, it was like trying to uh, get people to turn on the internet for the first time, right? Mm. You know, because you know they were you you know we there was a generation of travelers who were used to talking to a travel agent, and they're like, why do I want to go through a web browser? You know, so and so knows where I like to stay. They knows I want to fly on United and you know, that. So uh, it, it, it and that was there was literally a generation of travelers who were not online savvy. So that was quite a lot to overcome. It was interesting. <laughs> And what were like the engineering engineering challenges back then with like setting up all the 
infrastructure crappy, and crappy <laughs> web browsers you know the you know there was no chrome web browser right it was it was internet explorer and mm. mozilla that were incompatible uh databases were you know were in there were not really designed for cloud scale Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just, you know, and, and most computing was still the idea. It was it was still really memory bound on a single server and trying to build a, a resilient system. You know, in, in the end, you're talking about, uh, you know, gosh, I'm trying to remember our first set of servers. They were Dell servers. They probably had uh, they probably I think they were they were 32 bit. Th those are 32 bit CPUs, right? So they had, oh. uh, you know, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. I remember, I remember the transition. You know, we transitioned our cloud from 32 bit technology to 64 bit technology, right? Oh. Was, or memory, yeah. So, you know, it's very real constraints. So uh, it was, you know, you were memory constrained. Uh, you, you know, data, you know, God, we didn't have anything on MongoDB. You know, you needed, you know, you oh, ended up having to use relational databases, which are, you know, no joy to work with uh, in the context of a real-time system. So uh, yeah, it was, there, there was a ton of technical challenges. Uh, so. Yeah, <laughs> I can we can only imagine like is like a smartphone now like a lot you know more powerful than CPUs back then. Yeah, like you know uh, probably the that's probably not far for I mean may, yeah, they, they were they were pretty powerful processors. Okay, but. They, but, but but still, you know, they, they were memory constrained. I, you know, you probably have more, you know, probably have more memory in your in your Android phone or in my iPhone than you did in a, a, a you know, all but the really big servers. So yeah, it, it, they were constrained. But uh, you know, the the funny thing is the the code runs, you know, it runs about the same speed today on oh, much okay. faster servers. <laughs> And, and, and like, what part of your product and business um, involved? Like, what was stayed up in that cloud infrastructure and those servers? Like, what was you know happening there? You know, like, you know. I I, I couldn't hear. I, I missed what you said. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, no problem. Um, and what part of your product was relying on those servers and the cloud infrastructure? Well, the entire. You know, the entire, the entire. there was a, you know, there was, a, you have a web tier mm -hmm. running on your, on your web tier using load balance technology so mm -hmm. that you, you know, you run across a, 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 a collection of servers. Mm -hmm. uh, you then typically have your, uh, um, you know, one or more mid tier technology, you know, mm -hmm. that you then deal with to like pull reservations or to interact with data, you think got your database tier. And, you know, all along in there, you've got, you know, your levels of firewalling. Uh, a lot of caching, right? Because you know the you if you have to hit a disk to do everything, it just slows down, right? You're because you're still trying to be very responsive. So uh, uh, no, it, it was a, a you know it, I would say the uh, you know in in today's world, right? You've got microservices, you've got content uh, content uh, uh, delivery networks that that do a lot of caching for you. Uh, you, know, you just kind of had, you know, there, it was a, there was, in, in, in our case, most everything was pretty much running on bare metal. There wasn't a, you know, there wasn't the idea of spinning up another VM. There was putting another server in a rack, you know, that, that, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> okay. Thankfully, thankfully, as virtualization came along, uh, we, we benefited from that greatly. <laughs> and, and, and like, if back then, like, say, I don't know. I was your client. I was your client. Like, what would I experience? Like, I would open up my browser, go to your website. Like, say, I want to send you know my employee to you know yeah. some some so other You would place. you if you're an employee, you need to travel to the Ukraine. You would you know open up your web browser, log in. You have your own account. You'd log in. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all got your travel profile information. Mm -hmm. You would enter. I want to go from uh, from New York to the Ukraine, Kiev, wherever. Uh, or, 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 or Siberia. Yeah, <laughs> uh, or Siberia. Plug, plug it in, and uh, it would then pull back the uh, air schedules. And you say, okay, yeah, I want to leave at six, and I want to then return it. At, 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 you know, this it would then price it for you, uh, build the itinerary. Uh, it would then say, do you need a hotel? You know, do you need a car? All that kind of stuff. And then, in the end, it would. Uh, it would uh, 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 complete the, the the reservation in the reservation system. Uh, I mean, you were actually, you know, that that was actually it was actually making a reservation in an airline mm -hmm. system that you would then, uh, you know, then a, a, a travel agent would then issue the ticket uh, in the very early days 
uh, they might have even FedExed you a ticket. But thankfully, uh, you know, the world, the world, the e-ticket revolution occurred <laughs> about the same time. So you would just get a, an email that said, here's your ticket number, or here's your itinerary, et cetera. So, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a very, you know, in do in process. And, of course, along the way, it would, you know, it, it would use your business rules, say, ah, sorry, you can't, run, you can't fly first class. Or, mm -hmm. yes, it's a 12-hour trip, so you can fly first class, but you can't spend more than 10000 U.S., so... You know, they're all kind of business uh, and, 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 and booths are like the rules that co the, the company sets for their yeah. employees. Like, can yeah. spend more? Okay, yeah. Yeah, see every company have a different set of policies that mm -hmm. would be enforced along the way. So, yeah, it was a, uh, and that was, that was, uh, uh, a, that was a big deal, right? To be able to mm -hmm. enforce your own travel, your policy and, and make your travelers understand what it was, so. Mm -hmm. And, and like, and where were you like uh, making profit there? Like, was it like some affiliate stuff, or were companies like uh, paying you for oh. automating all that stuff? Trend, uh, transaction fees. So yeah, the Transact companies were saving. Companies paid us because one, uh, by enforcing uh, the policy, they mm -hmm. got more efficient air travel. Uh, people mm -hmm. didn't just book what they wanted; they booked what was in policy, okay. and and. Uh, in addition, uh, so there was a big savings, and uh, they paid mm -hmm. a transaction fee. So yeah, you have to, you uh, you have to have a lot of bookings <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. to make you know five bucks, ten bucks a time. But but it also it was labor saving for a company, uh, and so it would reduce their they could reduce the cost of their travel, and it would reduce the cost of their travel mm -hmm. services. For instance, if you call a travel agent. Uh, today you can barely find one to call, but if you call one uh, business travel agent, you'll probably pay 25 or 30 US dollars just for the, you know, to talk to them. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do it online, you know, it's somewhere between, you know, one and five, right? So, uh, so the companies were saving huge amounts, both on the, mm -hmm. uh, on the, the, uh, the air products or, or the, the travel products that they bought and on the, at the service level at the same time. Uh, it you know for, you know one is as the system evolved with mobile and everything else it just became that much more convenient for uh, mm -hmm. for, for travelers. So. And and how much of human intervention was like involved along the way? Um, like, like was it like just you go on the website and you know just book whatever you need and you get yep. in touch with the the so the. Uh, uh, the uh, the whole booking process was fully you know fully online automatic and. Mm -hmm. uh, once the uh, uh, once the reservation was completed, the uh, uh, it would be basically it lived in the air reservation system that the travel agency then had, and they would issue the ticket. And typically, they would typically just press a button or have a uh, they call them robotics. Uh, basically, they had automation that would issue the tickets. If something if some exception occurred, they would then deal with the exception, right? And you know that where they really came in is. If uh, if you're if while you were traveling your trip was disrupted right missed a flight changed itinerary etc they would deal with the changes and stuff like that so they provided they provided valuable service. So, so, so like it was uh, most like your service and then if something you know doesn't go according to plan then travel agents come in and kind of you know uh, look with their eyes on what's going yeah. on. Yeah, and the other place where they would get involved, <coughs> particularly for U.S. domestic travel, or, or domestic travel, you really didn't need a whole lot of help. But mm -hmm. if you were doing a complicated itinerary, you know, a, you know, multi-country or something like around that, around the globe, yeah, you, yeah. you know, it both from a pricing standpoint and just from a travel knowledge standpoint, uh, travel agents get real valuable and, and are still really useful for that. So. Mm -hmm. <coughs> They they still they still they still know things that products don't know. Yeah, let's wait let's wait for the for, for the AI to come in. <laughs> oh, oh, it's got to be coming. The the yeah. the uh, no, it, it's it's uh, I mean the uh, just the the pricing systems are sophisticated and they, mm -hmm. I think some of them are already using some forms of AI, but. Uh, but just, uh, I believe that they're investing heavily, you know, mm -hmm. but the biggest place that, uh, that I think you'll see it in travel, uh, is going to be one, well, in, in any kind of pricing optimization, man, they're going to be, you know, they're, they're running all kind of algorithms to figure out 
where their price point should be, mm-hmm. but also on the customer service level still, uh, when they have, uh, you know, having voice recognition on the front end and stuff like that, just as labor saving and, and makes the customers happier because you don't have to mm-hmm. wait to talk to somebody. Yeah, it, it reminds me kind of, you know, how all this like reinforcement learning learning algorithms like learn like the quickest way to get from point a to point b i guess that pretty much applies to travel just have some algorithm uh learn to look for ways to like optimize a trip for from one place to another no absolutely and and there 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 been there are a number of companies who have specialized in that over the years uh to you know whether to find uh, uh to find both optimal and optimal price and optimal routes. It's you know when you when you realize you know, you could you know there 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 are a thousand ways that you could go from you know Seattle to the Ukraine. You could mm-hmm. maybe take a, a nonstop flight. You might be able to take one with one connection. Well, you could connect through a hundred different airports. Yeah. You might be able to take one with two connections. All of a sudden, you have these these combinatronic problems that uh, that's that are are still legitimately hard problems today. And then when each one of those legs could have different pricing, mm-hmm. you know, trying to 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 in a you know a fraction of a second figure out, you know, with real time inventory, what's the cheapest way to get you there, and what's the fastest way to get you there? It's a it's an interesting problem. Yeah, uh, and especially like right now, as I guess, I mean, I guess almost everybody like uses that. Like there there's probably a lot of data coming and helping to optimize the whole thing. So I guess right now like the AI in travel is, you know, thriving, but, but yeah, it's, it's, it's probably, you know, as, as always, I guess, a combination of, you know, human heuristics and then AI working together to, you know, build something. Yep. And, and so, um, how, like, how, um, like, what was, like, the progress of, of that uh, company? Like, wh- what was it called again? Uh, the the the, uh, the the travel the the, 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 the product was called uh, ClickBook and then uh, we sold it to a company called Concur and it was called Concur Travel and it's still called Concur Travel today so uh, uh, it's mm-hmm. just it's just operated by SAP now so uh, mm-hmm. yeah it it was pretty much an exponential growth curve you know mm-hmm. like they call it a hockey stick right it mm-hmm. takes a long time to get you know to get to that point where you really begin growing but uh, as you grow your sales and your partner network and everything else and uh, it was uh, it was it was pretty exciting to watch the transactions flow so uh, and and like was the success always coming or, or like maybe there were like days when you were like uh, I don't know like it's not going anywhere like it's like what are we doing here I don't know <laughs> you always have those days yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, we you know we had some very real you know tragedies along the way, right? We mm-hmm. we we were about to launch our online travel system when when the nine eleven attacks happened. Oh, that's not the time to you know that 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 that's not the time to launch travel from in a market standpoint. It's also caused travel to decline by thirty percent. Then uh, you know as uh, you know the next you know, we saw some big you know there were uh, gosh there was a, a a disease called SARS. Uh, that spread, I think it was in Canada and Asia particularly, that spread, uh, oh gosh, that's probably 2003, 2004. It called, I mean, people were afraid to get on an airplane then, so it caused a huge drop. In it. And then uh, as the, uh, when, uh, uh, when the, uh, well, when the dot coms melted down in the early, mm-hmm. in the early thousands, man, <laughs> all those customers that you worked hard to get went out of business. And, oh. uh, and then, and then when we had the financial crisis, you know, uh, in the U.S. recently in 2008, it, it, you know, all of a sudden companies are not traveling, they're cutting back. So you very much see, you know, that it, it, and when you zoom out, it looks like a smooth exponential curve. Oh, yeah. You're living it. It's, it's a roller coaster. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's like, but, but yeah, it, it was good that eventually it was like, like, one step back, two steps for, forward. Oh yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Even, were, it, 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 even if it was like eight steps back and then nine steps forward or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so you sold your company to SAP in uh, in what year? Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. And you've been uh, working and operating there like on what position? Like, 
I worked there for another year or so, and then uh, I joined another startup because you know after you know it, it, startups are yeah. fun, and and you get to you know you get to immerse yourself in brand new technology and build a new team and all that stuff. So that was really cool. Yeah, and what I was asking is like, uh, were you like an engineer or a CTO or at, at that was, company? I was this uh, CTO. CTO, uh, like. Uh, and, yeah. All all the way from 1999 to like uh, to, uh, to well, I was most I was CTO for most of the time at both of those companies. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, you know you, uh, but I ran the R and D the entire time. So titles change, but responsibility doesn't. <laughs> and so, what what was like the funniest like the thing that you liked the most about that position and about you know that time in the company well, and being uh, the CTO? One getting to work with really good people. I mean that's that's the and. and and we acquired a number of companies along the way. So you get to, uh, you know, you constantly get to uh, learn, learn new things, right? And, you know, meet people who are really, really good at what they do in an area that you're not familiar with. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, there was never a dull moment that, that made it, uh, it was, it was, you know, there was an end candidly solving hard problems is a lot of fun, right? Yeah. You know, and, and, and whether they're hard problems of scale or hard problems of, 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 of product, uh, it just, it's, it's, you know, at the time it may not seem like fun, but it is, it's rewarding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can totally, totally agree with like bo both points. Um, at first, like getting to meet like interesting people, uh, is uh, a huge part of the motivation why I'm like trying to do this podcast and yeah, like just lately building the Android app, uh, it's been it's been like it's it hasn't been like a long time it's been like six months or something like we've been working on it but yeah at times it definitely seemed like impossible but when you zoom out it's it it's it's really a lot of fun to kind of figure out all those different challenges. I agree. No, I the, I think that the the neat thing about technology, particularly today, where you can you know where you can pretty much Google and find the answer to almost any question is you just have to jump in the deep end and it seems like it's you know you're really confused for that first you know for that first period of time but you begin understanding you find the resources you begin understanding it and then you realize well that wasn't that hard you know, so uh, yeah kind of like you know thankfully you know the stuff that we were you and I were collaborating on with uh, with darknet mm -hmm. right it was that kind of it was it's like it started off really confusing and yeah you know, it's, it turned out to be a great platform to really a great introduction you know because mm -hmm. you that because it turned out it was a really simple platform to use. Yeah. You, just had, you just had to get familiar with the concepts. Yeah, yeah. But at first I was like, what are the anchors? Like, what are we yeah. doing there? Like, why is it not working <laughs> and that sort of thing? But yeah, it's been, it's been super exciting. You know, uh, I've, I've made, you know, videos on Yellow and uh, a lot of people, a lot of people enjoy this and it's, and it's, and it's really cool if I, uh, you know, h help save someone time to figure yeah. the like the platform out and just get started with doing what they were doing, and so yeah, um, what were like the kind of people that you got to work with like uh, over the course of like those years? You know, For just really really good engineers. You know, uh, you know some uh, with uh, you know with. With a with, with well really good engineers really good designers you know the uh, you know just uh, just uh, people who are passionate about doing what they do really well and uh, mm -hmm. about building a product that's you know that's to me that that uh, having that vision you you having a team that is takes a lot of pride in what it's doing uh, is always it's is always fun to be part of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, I, I can imagine, like, otherwise, when, like, nobody is excited and, like, doesn't know what they're, like, doing there, like, it's sad, but when people are aligned on the goal, when they're, like, enjoying individually what they're doing and collectively, like, they're excited, like, you know, you, ju you just like to work there and, you know, I guess the work just flows, even though there is, like, this zigzaggy, you know, progress thing yeah, that's hopefully, you know, well, go going yeah. on. And part of that is, you know, as technical people, is working in a good technical environment, but it's also working with good business people because there's a lot of great technologies that uh, just never got delivered to the marketplace. You know, they didn't have good salespeople, they didn't have good marketing, they didn't have good operational control. It takes all of that, uh, and uh, that, that's, you know, to me, that's the, 
you know, it, there's there's the best pro, the best code doesn't always win, but it's the the most complete team, you know, with the mm-hmm. with the good idea, you know, can do a whole lot. It's really it, it's it's really fun, and you don't win them all, but uh, but definitely having uh, you know having having a a good group of technology people and a smart group of business people is a is is a is a heck of a formula for for us a lot of fun in a product. Yeah, and uh, as we can see, like it it it, it worked for you. You got to qu- acquired. Yeah. You know, my my thing is always you know, successful tech companies get acquired. By mm-hmm. bigger, even bigger tech companies, right? And they 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 leverage the distribution, and you know it's it's a it, it's kind of what's happened for the last you know 50 years or mm-hmm. last 30 years of technology. So the the big companies get bigger and bigger. I think we're going to really see that that mm-hmm. continue that accelerate uh, in the uh, in the space of AI because the you know the big companies. Have the big dollars to invest, and they have the very established, you know, data lakes already. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they, but they need they need to be able to acquire uh, machine. You know, they, they they can develop some of it, but uh, they can mm-hmm. also they can acquire machine learning technology from startups or smaller companies, and then scale it pretty, you know, pretty, you know, in, in pretty exciting ways, right? Yeah, I guess you know, Google Without have been doing. A lot of, without the a lot data, of, all you have is a model. So, sorry. I say without without having access to all the data, you just have a good you you have a good model, but you don't have the ability to train it. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, yes, you're like training the machine vision algorithm. You you go into paint and you start drawing, I don't know, cars and buses, and then you draw lines, and like after a thousand of paint images, so <laughs> something gonna happen, right? And, and like it's been 10 years and oh my god <laughs> yeah I guess like DeepMind and you know was acquired by Google and you know yep. they're obviously doing a lot of a lot of a lot of you know good damage in AI field and that, that oh, sort they're, of thing. They're, what they're doing is incredible right and yeah they're I mean what they've been able just the, the different generations of their technology is fascinating and also Right, OpenAI's. Uh, yeah. What is the new model that OpenAI came out with? The uh, their their text generator GT. Yeah. Guys, I can't remember the the acronym GT2 yeah. or something like that. Is you know, it's. I mean, I, I've looked at some of the stuff that it generated. It was you couldn't. It was it, it, it looked like a, it was de- very much looked like a human wrote it. I have you seen like that me. that re- recycling is no good? You know, text yeah. example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it right. sure looked like it could pass a Turing test to me, right? If you could tell yeah. it, you know, it was like, wow, I, I, it, 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 it was, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, and and I mean, there there have obviously been like a lot of opinions on the fact that they did not like release it. And what do you think? I, you know, that that's kind of interesting to me. They can always decide to release, you know, to, to release the full mm-hmm. model, but uh, you know. They're trying to be, you know, it, it could, it, well, you know, if nothing else, it could generate some really good term papers for kids who don't want to write term papers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get a homework assignment and you're like, don't want to, you just put in some words. Man, like that would, that would have been magic. <laughs> yeah, uh, have you seen the Sarash Ravel video on the, uh, on this OpenAI text generator? Uh, which, which video? I'm not sure. Uh, the Sarash Ravel. The do you know, do you know Sarash? I don't think so. I'm. I'm... Okay. Okay. It, it's you know th- that guy who does a lot of AI videos, and basically he was like uh, coming up with like ways that can be useful, and one of the ways w- was like that. You know, I kind of uh, I don't know that seemed pretty creative to me. Is like to. Uh, Get over the kind of the writer's write, writer's block when you kind of don't know what to write. Just put in some sentences, and it's like, okay, I want to write about cats, and it's like, I don't know, cats have four legs, and they uh, make those funny sounds, and they live at houses and other places. And like, oh my, okay, now I know what to write about. Well, to me, if you combine that with some of the deep fake technology, you know, you could mm. create a character who you know who you could then render saying the words and everything else, right? I mean, you could mm-hmm. you could do some. Uh, 
I, I feel sure there'll be some really interesting bots created if or, or otherwise. So, uh, and and I I do think one reason they uh, they there's they don't want to release everything. Well, I think there are a lot of reasons, but I mm-hmm. I think Microsoft had a, had one of well I think Microsoft put put a, a bot out a while back that uh, people uh, started abusing it where or, or I think it was learning from the inputs uh, and it started people started feeding it a lot of a lot of inflammatory stuff mm. that it started repeating then that didn't go so well for them so that may be part mm. of the motivation too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that was like. That could sort of like it was on Twitter or something like that. That bot with Microsoft. I think, it's a twi- I think it was a Twitter bot. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I can imagine like you can. I mean, the like uh, bad use of that technology would be to generate some like human-looking, you know, negative comments somewhere, like manipulate media or stuff like that. Like that's yeah. not good stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, an interesting thing that I've like learned from that video on on the technology was that they've like released all the papers and I guess all the algorithms, uh, n- n- just not the trained model. So I guess yeah. Yeah. people can replicate that if they want yeah. to. I guess, I guess it makes sense because if you're like a startup or Microsoft or you know you can probably replicate that and it's kind of open. But if you're like a uh, person who wants to do some harm. You know, you're just not gonna yeah. carry it's, the whole thing out. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna take some pretty substantial resources, you know, at least mm-hmm. you know by today's standards, to do that. But uh, yeah, I think that was. I, I think you're right. Mm-hmm. And so, what currently excites you about AI and what's being made? I, well, you know, the, for me, one continuing to learn about it is, you know, in in different areas, just just when. You know, the, the, there's so many different, mo- different not models, but just, uh, well, models and techniques that uh, I find it fascinating. Uh, what I'm real interested to see is, is how it, uh, how we go beyond convolutional neural networks, right? What's yeah. beyond that? I mean, when you, when you, I mean, they're in amazingly powerful, but they're very narrow and uh, uh, but still amazingly powerful. Uh, you know, I, whatever model comes next, uh, I was thinking, you know, imagine, you know, the, you know, just like, you know, whatever technology we were using 10 years ago looks, you know, it looks primitive compared to where we are today, whether it's, you know, the PC you're running on, the phone you're running on, or, you know, or what was at the time AI. So 10 years from now, what will it look like, man? I don't know, but I bet it'll mm-hmm. be really exciting. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, I guess like 10 years ago or something like that, people thought, or like rather the researchers thought that there would be like no way to tell whether it's a cat in the picture or a dog, and now it's like 99, 99% accuracy. It, and it's, I mean, the, the, the improvement on ImageNet scores has been, I mean, it's just been insane ever since. Yeah. So, and so, yeah, and, and it's also being fueled by, you know, you know, you know, again, today we run on, you know, GPUs and TPUs, Ten years from now, I can't imagine the the processing capacity that 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 the 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 high performance computing will have, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, today I was excited when I you know when I can you know train my neural network in, you know you know in, in on a on one of the uh, clusters in Amazon in like mm-hmm. three hours. Well, you know, yeah. But you know, what if I could do that in three minutes? You know, which I would expect, right? Um, is uh, quantum computing something that you know something about, or something that you think about? Cause... I am continued to be very interested in it, mm-hmm. uh, but it it still eludes me. Uh, you know, the, mm-hmm. the the quantum annealer, the D wave is is I kind of understand a little bit mm-hmm. uh, how it works, but when you start talking about qubits, I I I I read the papers and stuff like that. I I, I understand. As a as a non physicist, the mm-hmm. physics behind it, you know the idea of entanglement and superposition. Okay. And man, I don't you know I I, I don't understand how <laughs> I still don't understand it. So, but I but the the people in the industry say it's coming and it's gonna you know all of a sudden it'll it'll pretty much break every form of encryption we have today. Uh, I, it, it sounds like it's very suitable for some problems and. It's just a matter of how you know how smart people 
map it to solve more of those problems. So it 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 looks to me like it will appear as a you know as a as an accelerated computing mm-hmm. you know that will go alongside of general purpose computing, whatever that'll look like in the future. Mm-hmm. You know, the same way we have a GPU. You know, there may very well be a uh, you know uh, you know a quantum annealer or or or, or a, a, a qubit based system that that you know solves very specific problems factoring problems or whatever but uh, i continue to you know that uh, i in the end you have to be half it seems like you have to be half physicist and half statistician to to use a mm. quantum computer today but uh, i figure at some point you know there'll be a a, a quantum a, a python interface to you know some you know some some quantum solver that that amazon hosts and then we can all you know we can all we'll all have you know, have a, a, a quantum, you know, or, you know, for, for, for three dollars an hour access to a quantum engine, so. Hey, I just went to the store and bought my own quantum computer. It's a <laughs> three-way three, three uh, feet and it stands now in my, in my bedroom. Um, I play video games on it and, 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 also, and also break some encryption, just for fun, <laughs> just for fun. Yeah, and and why do you say like it's gonna break the encryptions? Is it like like Fact, why factoring? Uh, right, our our encryption today is based on the fact that it's very hard to factor large prime numbers. So right, mm-hmm. you know, your and and the uh, the quantum computers, <coughs> pardon me, are uh, mm-hmm, of course they're they're very adept at well. I, 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 and I'm sorry, I'm not that familiar with the encryption. Um, when you say factor l- uh, large numbers, like what do you mean? So uh, when uh, it, the, probably the most the, the the most easy way to understand it is mm-hmm. to uh, you know when when our computers are are talking over a uh, uh, an encrypted stream, we've mm-hmm. done a key exchange and uh, through uh, uh, very often I think it's. Uh, Oh gosh, it's Diffie Hellman, or there, there are various ways to exchange keys. But in the end, what we're what what are what are what is a part of that key exchange? We're getting two big prime numbers. We're multiplying them together, and you know one, and I know one, so we can easily divide out and get mm. the other. But if you're an observer looking at a hundred-digit number, you know, factoring that on today's computers, or maybe a thousand-digit number. Into, into its primes is a is still a very is a computationally expensive problem, right? Like there might not be enough hours in the universe to factor it into primes, so you can figure out your key and my key, right? If you're talking about public key and private key, mm-hmm. so the the thing with the quantum computers is they can uh, they can they, they can eliminate numbers very quickly and come up with a small set of primes as this is as i understand it it's not mm. quite right there <clears throat> and, and and again it's a whole statistical thing right that they do but uh in the end the 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 they're supposed to be able to uh to factor large primes which is the basis of our symmetric of our encryption so so it's like there's that uh say you know 100 digit n- number that is a key and right now, there's just not enough computational power or knowledge to kind of figure out like what <coughs> what are like those you know the right keys like. Well, it's made up of two prime numbers, right? Yeah, of two th- 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 that are multiplied together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and quantum computer can somehow like statistically or you know whatever figure out like the it can figure out like two numbers or yeah, it can it can fa- it can factor it can be it can mm-hmm. be used to factor large primes. So don't know exactly how, but I, I, I mm-hmm. th- that's that's the reason that people say quantum computing <coughs> can will be able to break, you know, you know, certain uh, most of the most of the the security protocol that we have today, and so we'll find a different form. Yeah. Of it. And, yeah. yeah, it's like that, you know, cat uh, a, a cat and a mouse game, you know, just. St- uh, both sides can try to outsmart each other. Um, a little bit, you know, a question that's a little bit off topic. I, I wonder how do they uh, trans- transmit those keys that they are not kind of getting intercepted? That you know, you can just steal a key because you. Uh, it's a it's a well known algorithm that I can't remember right now to be able to to mm-hmm. exchange do a key. It's, it's called a, a key exchange. Mm-hmm. And there, it's again based on uh, some number theory properties, so that 
uh, it allows two parties. There's some really good videos on it on, mm -hmm. on okay. uh, you know, YouTube. Okay. Uh, I, I was just okay. I yeah, was just wondering. No, uh, no problem. But it's it's a really cool process where where you know I tell you something, you tell me something. I added another number. You know, it's basically it's based on some number theory and factoring, and it, but it's it, it's how keys are exchanged. Uh, I, I said I, I believe I believe it's very often called DH key exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's just a it, it's one of many techniques. It's just mm -hmm. kind of cool. But does the key get transmitted, or are they like generate? Like say we're talking on Skype, or you know, or you're not that familiar. Uh, it uh, let's see, gosh, you're. <laughs> uh, it's the kind of thing that I learned just enough to be dangerous with it. Uh, okay. the, the key, as I recall, is not transmitted, but the results of using the key are okay. between the parties. So, mm. so it's kind of like, uh, yeah, it, 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 there's enough information shared mm -hmm. that uh, both sides can figure out what the key is. Mm, okay. Send the key okay. Directly. Okay. It's, okay. It's very clever. It's it's really worth looking. It, it's 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 worth watching a couple of YouTube. So it's very cool. Yeah, and and that's been a two minutes uh, encryption pause on the podcast. We can keep going to the. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was I was just curious, you know, um, yeah, and uh, and and and. and you're saying like that you're excited about what's gonna come like after the convolutional neural nets um, but like what are the applications of them like right now that you know really really uh, look like really interesting to you uh, you know, to me I think I guess the ultimate goal is 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 I guess what they call hard AI or more of a general AI so, you mm -hmm. know, to me the today you can you know, you can train networks to do some very amazing things mm -hmm. and there are different techniques like reinforcement learning where you don't have to give them a training set or whatever mm -hmm. but in but but they're but they're somewhat but in the end they're they're still narrow they can be an expert but they're 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 very narrow in what they can do well I, you know no I guess but I guess if you look at at uh, at, at, uh, at AlphaGo it's you know now it's solved pretty much all the hard games which is pretty amazing but uh but it can't read <laughs> right so to me it, it's it's you know again something that can that will be able to uh to continue to to learn more and more about you know to, to mm. go deeper and deeper right once i once i have trained my neural network the only way that it improves is with more data you know that 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 is that's 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 fed through the system uh, but it, but it takes a, you know, it, it, but it can only get better at what, you know, it, it can only get better in that domain or of the image, you know, for instance, uh, object detection. You know, what I'm interested in is, is, you know, something that can, or what will be interesting is, you know, is the, is, is, I think it may be the, when you begin combining various different networks together, right, to solve a problem, mm. I think that's fascinating. Kind of like yeah. what you do, kind of like what you do manually, right? In your bus and number yeah. recognition, you run one level to do object recognition to find the bus and to find the numbers. Mm -hmm. Then you run a different model to detect the numbers, right? Well, the day that 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 the software itself decides what to do, I think that'd be tremendously exciting. Yeah, if you kind of think about it, um, like like they're really gotta come like a different like a new model to do that because. I mean, if you train a neural network to say, I don't know, recogn recognize cats and images, it kind of like starts to leverage like all of its research, like all of its hyper parameters to, uh, to find the cats. Like it just doesn't leave much space to like read or, you know, do whatever. Cause it's, it's, I don't know, you, you would need a kind of, you, you would need to train, like either you, train separate like you train their eyes and their ears and their like mouths like text generator like uh, lstms and concepts or you kind of get them together and kind of kind of give them give them some crazy data set that's yeah i don't know like okay. like w what what do you think that could be possible steps to like get closer and i have no idea yeah <laughs> <laughs> i just will i just ex i'm just looking forward and again okay. 10 years from now i'm I will be really disappointed if we're on Inception version 19, 
you know, even though it's really good, but if it's still the same, you know, CNN model, that would be, you know, I can't imagine that'll be the case, right? I, again, I, I just think it'll be, I think, I, 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 but who knows, right? It's going to take some, you know, inspired, you know, inspired people doing, you know, doing some really hard work to get there. Yeah, I can I can almost imagine people like uh, watching this interview ten years from now and being like, "What are those those guys are like? You know, what are they talking about? Like we have like this, you know, S G L M H M's like they can you know uh, solve physics and do quantum computing and they can wash through the walls and they have like lasers or you know whatever <laughs> they they have." Yeah, um, are you? I don't, I don't know. Uh, are you w worried when that time will come? Like, do you see any, you know, potential threats with that or something? Not, not from what's one technology has been used for good and bad ever no, since. No, uh, uh, so, sorry, not from, uh, not from where? I said technology to me has been uh -huh. used for good things and bad things ever mm -hmm. since we invented fire, right? Yeah. And the idea. The idea of a of a of a autonomous drone targeting system armed with weapons is scary. Let's face mm -hmm. it; it's going to happen. It's halfway happened already. So, uh, so I, I, I'm not <laughs> I, I'm not afraid of, or I don't yet. And I'm not worried about a Terminator, you know, kind of yeah. Skynet problem. I'm candidly, you know, to me, the the again the 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 neural networks that we have are are very. I would say that they're, they can be very, they can be an expert in a very narrow area, but they don't really go out of their lanes too much. You know, what, what I'm probably more worried about is, you know, the, the, the you know, one, if you think of like a, a autonomous driving car, right? You know, the, the neural network technology is pretty well established to be able to do, you know, uh, path, you know, lane detection, pathfinding, you know, finding other cars on the road and stuff like that. So, you know, the, the, the neural network that does the recognition is, you know, is, is, you know, is pretty somewhat tried and true already. Candidly, I'm more worried about the, probably the 10,000 lines of Python that are wrapped around that, that are in the end, you know, controlling the motors and everything else. I'm probably more, more concerned about the bugs in that code than I am mm. the uh, neural network uh, uh, <laughs> uh, becoming self-aware and extinguishing humanity. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, you, and you know like people using you know yeah I don't know like the whole AGI thing it kind of it kind of seems a bit worrying but like again the more I kind of look into the whole thing the less kind of worrying for me it seems you know uh, I don't know I just I to me you know having mm -hmm. having software controlling life critical systems or you know or or dangerous systems you know, most of the time, this you know, if the software is working right, it can be a good thing. It's when mm -hmm. it, 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 but it, it's when it, it's when it's not working right that all of a sudden you got problems. Uh, again, I, I'm, the, to me, they're, you know, the, the, they're, you know, the idea of, of, uh, you know, you, you could definitely have some scary situations, right, with, uh, you know, using, mm -hmm. you know using AI or, or any kind of software for targeting and, and, and stuff like that, that could go bad wrong. But, uh, uh, that, that's less of, that's less of AI being a threat to us. That's just man mm -hmm. being a threat to man with technology. Yeah. And I totally, totally agree with that. Cause, um, especially what you said that about like those Python, you know, code, it's kind of, you know the lines of that code that actually you know control the cars. Um, you know, a lot of people die in those accidents, and if the if the rate of accidents can be you know dropped down, like it's it's a good thing. It's a oh absolutely no. I, to me, what's going to be real interesting is as 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 we have a, a mixture of of uh, autonomous vehicles mm. and human driven vehicles. That's a whole lot harder problem than just having all autonomous vehicles that play by the same set of rules. That's like having horses and cars on the road at the same time, right? They yeah, but but, I, and I mean, cars and horses—they've been on the roads, and I guess, I guess, <laughs> I don't know. It's for the horses usually. Huh? Sir? 
it doesn't happen when, when accidents happen. They don't. The horses don't come out too well. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess human beings in the cars also didn't do all, all that well. Um, yeah, they're just less predictable than than software. So, you know. Yeah, an interesting thing here is that I've been reading uh, Enlightenment now by Steven Pinker, and an, an interesting thing that kind of uh, comes to my mind is that, like, you know, like there there's obviously like a lot of accidents happening with the. Uh, manually controlled cars but that doesn't mean that when there were like horses that could you know uh, kick you with their legs like that that was like much safer like it wasn't it wasn't really you know any safer when there were like horses that could you know run over you or something right yeah and I guess I guess the like real value is that when you go from a horse to a car, you know, and that I mean, horses are awesome, you know. I'm like have nothing against. I have friends who like really really like horses and like riding on them and stuff. Uh, but when you go to like a car, like like a horse, you can't you can't really like manufacture another I don't know leg or tail, uh, like whatever. Like, you can like set up, you can like enable a GPS computer on the horse. But with a car, you can kind of keep on inventing and you know not now. You have the uh, seat belts and then you have you know AI that controls it and you could you know you can keep improving it and that's that's cool yeah well but you know we're really just entering the t at least in a large scale we're entering the time where there's really a lot of software involved on the car yeah. right you know and we all know what you know what software does best it crashes so I, I <laughs> you know it's like I, oh. I, I I you know it's like I mean, it's still in the average case. It's probably it's it's much more aware than a than a than a human driver, right? It's it's sampling radar and lidar, mm -hmm. you know, m multiple times a second. But I still get worried about you know, you know, you know, the I get worried about the 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 Python code that's in there, mm. <laughs> right? You know, or, or not not to pick on Python, but no, about yeah. about you know subtle errors that come out right yeah i i found a bug in some code i wrote today that's been functioning for three months and i'm like mm. i never hit that condition before i'll be down right I, I when you think about all the all the 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 inputs into you know whether it's a, a self-flying drone or a autonomous car or whatever it's like man there's a you know there's a lot that could go wrong <laughs> mm. Especially like if it's a drone, because it can like, or a car. Yeah, I guess they can like crush you or something, you know. Or yeah, or worse yet, it just it just reboots, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm surprised. This is like the best, the like the best Skype session, knock on wood, that I've been a part of in years, right? Usually, mm -hmm. about halfway through your Skype session, something crashes, network goes out, you know, you know, or something hangs up. So right. You know, if, if you know, God help us if our if our function <laughs> isn't as rel is, is 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 not more reliable than Skype. Yeah. And like, are self-driving cars or like the automation something that you like think about? Like, is that something that like you're interested in? Just interested, fascinated. Just. By just mm -hmm. I think it, yeah, yeah I, I don't know much I really I other than you know a little bit of stuff online I really haven't explored exactly how they work but mm. you know I see people now are starting to homebrew you know self-driving cars right mm. literally you can buy the servos you end up having I mean it's, it's 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 amazing to think you can buy the sensors and literally you know I mean Nvidia sells a package you know but people are homebrewing stuff to literally you know, build their own self-driving car. That's pretty, you know, it's, it's, it, it's not, you know, it, it, it's still, you know, it's still the hackers and the hobbyists doing it, but mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's, that's pretty amazing when it, when it's economic, when you could, you know, when you could, you know, make mm -hmm. your VW self-driving with, you know, with a, with a, you know, with a, with a, with a Dell and a, with a Dell laptop and, and a couple of cameras. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think Tesla's, you know, they have, I think they're like number one right now with this surf technology. Yeah, I think it like works on the highways and in traffic. I, I, yep. I I've seen a few videos. It's, yeah. yeah, and 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 to me, that's what they've released. So you know what they're, you know, I think all the people racing and self-driving, 
you know, they literally have their own little little cities and everything else. But I saw, I think Google, maybe it was Google, maybe it was Uber released a, 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 a full virtual model for for uh, autonomous car. Literally, okay. you could see, you know, I guess you could, you could see streets in it. And I mean, you basically, you know, build it. You know, you build the technology, and you literally can. It was a full simulation of it. You know, so mm. is it is it like a video? Is it does it look like a video game? Like yeah, it looked like a graphic. video game. Yeah, it, it looked like a but but it had like a wireframe view where you're seeing what it's recognizing. The same way you know, like in, in image mm. recognition, you know, you had like the wireframe of what it was recognizing, and then that kind of what I call like, I guess like the cartoon styles, you know, of, of the road and the surroundings, mm. but. It was, I mean, and they released it. I think it was Uber released it as a framework for, uh, you know, for for automation, for for you know, for automated car development. It's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, like like there's gonna be a lot of change invo- involved with with that. I mean. <laughs> Do you like see yourself, you know, like, like, would you, I mean, I mean, have you like tried maybe, you know, driving in the Tesla or just in an other car? Like, have you like seen some demos or something? Uh, I've not, I've not driven a Tesla, uh, which, which is bad, bad geek creds for me. But uh, <laughs> uh, we have a, uh, we have a car that has the, uh, the lane detection, the oh, what are they? Uh, basically, distracted driver lane detection and the mm. uh, uh, the collision avoidance and all that stuff. It's pretty wild to be. I mean, literally, I just took my hand off the wheels and and yeah. I mean, or if you like like lean out, if you like you know accidentally drift in your lane, it pushes back on you. Uh, mm. You know, it it'll slow down as you approach a car. It's 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 it's. You know what's what's already in you know in U.S. cars is a, or just you know standard you know assembly line cars is pretty amazing, I, and yeah the I've I've seen the video of the guy uh, of the guy asleep in his Tesla going 70 miles an hour. Mm. Yeah. A number of years ago, uh, when Google was still testing them out, I happened to be in San Francisco. You know they they're running up and down the 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 interstate there. Mm-hmm. I was in a cab and. I, I mean, the, I could you could see that the driver didn't have their hands on the wheel, and it was just going right along. And I, I asked the cab driver, I said, "Crowd it a little bit. I want to see if it changes lanes." <laughs> <laughs> and it did. did it? It did. It did. Uh, yeah. And what what year was that? Oh gosh, that was probably maybe 2010, 2000. Yeah, it, it wasn't that long ago, but it was. It, that was that was before they. I mean, it 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 was like a big SUV with a big you know thing across the top that it, it, it was very clearly a uh, you know it, it was it didn't blend into traffic at all <laughs> it, was it like a Google car or something it, it like... was, yes yeah, Google it was a Google self-driving car mm-hmm. they were, and I think that was well before I think they were the only people doing it at the time uh, and mm-hmm. yeah, it was just it was just zipping right along in traffic mm-hmm. so and um, I just wanna I just wanna uh, Switch a topic for 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 sure. for for a second. Like you've mentioned that after, like in the th- two thousand fourteen, you went to work for for a startup. Yeah, and I, I was just wondering, like, uh, like what was that that you know excited you to go there? Like what what you were doing? Like what was that about? Uh, uh, they're focused on uh, on uh, reinventing the the the. I would say the credit card process uh, that a company de- deals with, uh, pretty neat technology that they were working on uh, to help, you know, to help manage the spend in a company. I, I would say it, it kind of is, it's very related to, it's it's not travel, it's not expense, but it's the, it's part of that ecosystem of controlling, mm-hmm. controlling, control spend. Mm-hmm. It was, it's, it's a, it, it, I, I think the team has some really good ideas they're trying to execute. And and how you were able to contribute to you know development? I I would I would work to uh, build the team, uh, and uh, uh, and like all startups, you go through pivots and and stuff like that. I, I, it, I, I, and 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 have you like uh, have you like have you been there like from the beginning or 
uh, I joined uh, uh, as as the as the company was kind of uh, the founder had already started it, so I wasn't one of the founders. Uh, okay. I was I was just there uh, as the team started to as they started to try to grow the software team. So mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. And and like, uh, are there like any results that have been released? Like, uh, uh, they're, are there? They're still, in, they're still in stealth mode now, so I I I, I don't want to talk about it, but I'm sure okay. they'll okay okay I'm okay sure they'll do sure. some cool stuff. Yeah, we haven't mentioned like the name of the company or anything, so it's it's yeah. super, super super stealth. Like they they can literally be like next door, and I wouldn't know. I, I would be surp I, I would be surprised because I mean you, you saw what's outside the yeah. window, but they could. Who knows? Um, yeah. So um, lately you've been playing a lot with object detection, and we've been chatting about a lot about that. Um, maybe you could talk about like what you've been up to with your sure. exper experiments with sure. computer, well, the, computer vision. Yeah, no, well, I've been uh, been uh, one. Just we talked a little bit earlier. I you know kind of jumping back into you know neural networks was kind of you know like relearning everything. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I, I started out doing kind of the usual, uh, uh, you know, using kind of the, you know, ImageNet database and stuff like that, uh, at the, about that. And I, and that was fun, but at some point you kind of want to pull in your own images and Amazon mm -hmm. had released, uh, their deep lens camera, mm -hmm. uh, which is really cool. It's like a little Linux box with a camera glued on top. Uh, and it connects to the. Uh, to I'm, the I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm, I'm gonna go, go, Google them just just that I can like see yeah. the pictures. Keep going. Sure. It, it they released it. It plugs in nicely to the overall Amazon infrastructure. So uh, at about the same time, I uh, I was uh, kind of outgrowing uh, running uh, Darknet YOLO on my. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, this that's guy. right there. Yeah, yeah, looks really looks really neat. Yeah, it's 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 a cool. It's just you know, it's a little Linux box with a built-in camera, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, but the the thing that it does well, it's got an Intel-based GPU in it. I wish it was a, <laughs> I wish it was a uh, uh, Nvidia, but uh, anyway, mm -hmm. it's a, it's got a it's got a pretty good GPU in it. Uh, so and it plugs in well to the Amazon cloud. So I started messing around with that uh, mm -hmm. because. Uh, like I said, I was I was starting to outgrow my uh, my my local system for training networks, and I said, well, it'll be real easy if I uh, if I do my training in uh, in the uh, Google in, I'm sorry in the uh, in the Amazon cloud on mm -hmm. one of their uh, on one of their boxes with multiple GPUs, and it makes it really easy to uh, to deploy uh, to then deploy a, a model once you've trained it uh, onto the deep lens. So uh, the thing that I, I, I got, like I said, I got tired of kind of recognizing cats and dogs and fruits. Uh, mm -hmm. So I wanted to see if I could build a, a detector that could pick up uh, that, well, how good I could do at recognizing guns. So mm -hmm. like you did for your buses, I, uh, I, I acquired, I acquired a, it was a very, it was a great learning process. I acquired a bunch of images uh, both from videos and from uh, and just from online uh, and had to go through the markup process train the network and uh, started uh, running. Have, have you labeled all of them yourself? I'm sorry, what? Uh, did, uh, did you label all of them yourself? Yeah, uh, uh, I did. Yeah. Just, yeah, like you, uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of rectangles. But uh, now uh, 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 Amazon has uh, released a, basically a, a service they call Ground Truth. Mm -hmm. which allows you to uh, and the next time I need to do images I will use it oh. uh, you can you upload your your set of training images without any uh, without rectangles basically mm -hmm. and for uh, basically they'll send it to their mechanical Turk basically paid you know you know paid people to do it to uh, mark your rectangles so uh, that'll be the next time I do a training set mm. uh, I'm gonna definitely uh, uh, let 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 the uh, ground truth service do it for me. Uh, is that, that yeah, would... yeah. I guess there's like some value in being able to like have a a sense of like what's going on in in like the data set. But you know, when it's like hours and hours and hours, it's really just it's really just 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 boring. It's, I know, still I, I think what I've learned more than anything about 
training for image recognition, uh, you've got to be able to, uh, you know, it's the, I mean, the data quality is everything, you know, and, and that's, I've even gone to so far, I was, mm -hmm. I was pretty happy with the recognition rates that I was getting against test images. But uh, when I put it on the deep lens, I was, uh, some of the results still weren't that great. Uh, and what I realized is that, you know, the, the images that you're typically pulling down from the web, you know, they might be, you know, a 4K image, you know, with, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I pulled a bunch of stuff from movies, right? There are a lot of guns mm. in movies. Uh, and, uh, of course, they're, you know, perfectly shot, beautiful lighting and all that stuff, all that in reality. So I started trading some uh, images uh, uh, acquired uh, through the deep lens and uh, for fine tuning. And that, that's made a big difference. Uh, as you and I were talking about, you know, there you have to do some or what I find makes improves the recognition quality is doing some local. The whole thing about the deep lens, you're doing local processing, right? So it, it's 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 running right there you know, on the device mm. uh, and just sending notifications to the cloud. Uh, but you can, uh, the cool thing uh, is... What, what kind of notifications? To, uh, so when you manage the device through Amazon and you mm. and you can publish, no, you can publish detections. So right, you, for you, they have several stock models uh, mm -hmm. for object detection, for action detection and stuff like that. And what it will do is, uh, uh, when it makes a detection, uh, it will publish a message to the cloud mm. and into their into their notification system. And then you it basically a, it's an event bus. And at that point, you could then, if you want to take some action with it, uh, you can have whatever logic you want in the cloud. Mm. You can basically identify the the situation, you know, on the device, send a notification to the cloud, and then take some action. So mm. uh, it's it's uh, it's. Uh, I mean, I guess you can pretty easily build some like security application with it. Definitely. Yeah. That, well, that or, or any. To me, the the, yeah. the neat thing about the deep lens, you know, it, it it allows you. I mean, it's edge computing, right? It allows mm -hmm. you to do the, you know, it, it's it it allows you to do that that processing right on the edge and just mm -hmm. send out appropriate relative mm -hmm. you know that's important signals which is a cool thing uh, if, if, I, if I can figure out how to uh, share I can I, I, I have a, a recognition that I can I get just some I use for testing okay. yeah would, would be really cool yeah, uh, are, are you on your PC yeah I'm on PC I, I think I'm trying to find the I just need uh, to <coughs> somewhere I need I'm sure I'm just trying to find the uh, ability to share. Uh, it's it's uh, do you see like a heart like, like in the uh, right in the right bottom you know basically side of the screen there there are like two squares. To, uh, I can I can sh I can do you see my screen like th this button this button here. Okay, that guy. I see yes. that button on yours, and I am trying to find it. Yeah, the, the sharing on mine. So give do, me one do, second. Do, do you have like a really old version of Skype? You know, it's it's Windows 10. It's whatever I got installed. Oh, know. okay. No, it and you know, like typical Windows, it reboots itself oh, okay. about every yeah. month with new shit. So let's see, share screen. I can do this. Let's see. Yeah. Is it sharing now? Yep, something. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I I can see that. Let's see, probably pop this up. Uh, this is just some test images that I was uh, running through. I mean, nothing nothing too extraordinary. You'll see both, mm -hmm. you know, successful recognitions and some where they missed. Uh, <coughs> and I run them mm. through it several different. Uh, yeah, guitars look like guns to my network, <laughs> but uh, I'll, you know, they'll run through it at several different uh, resolutions. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of misses in a row. That's not good. But uh, yeah, I was just tweaking the training the other day. Mm -hmm. This is a yeah. This is uh, yeah. I don't know how fast it's streaming to you, but uh, what I've been working on doing is is distance. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's pretty good up close, but uh, dealing with uh, mm -hmm. more distant images, uh, it gets interesting. So, and so. and and how and, and how, how do you like uh, you know? Oh my god, it's so weird. I, I see myself talking and I see myself talking on your screen and it's like, uh, there's like such, I, I look drunk or something, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, uh, 
how do you manage to like uh, combat you know that that uh, le 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 length thing like, like how do you make it work better like a different you know, dis you know just, distances just a little a little just a little bit of image processing uh, uh, some to like zoom it in uh, you'll see here there are different zoom mm -hmm. levels mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of uh, lighting correction and stuff like that uh, just to you know just to make it you know, work as, as mm. uh, it's kind of trial and error, right? The, the network, you know, uh, you know, when I train the network, I just watch, I'll, I'll go ahead and stop sharing now. But uh, mm -hmm. when I, uh, when I train the network, I just, uh, let me see if I can find the stop sharing button here. There we are. Yep. That, way you won't, that way you won't see yourself in the mirror. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, when I train the network, well, and, and nowadays I'm using uh, ResNet, uh, uh, because uh, uh, Amazon is running well, they have ten, they do have a TensorFlow implementation, but it's through. Uh, but their uh, their primary stuff is all MX Apache MXNet. So uh, I migrated from a Yolo, which I, I really like, but uh, Apache is is pretty cool, uh, mm. and, and I can run a bunch of different uh, model, you know, bunch of different models pretty easily through there. But ResNet was kind of a good trade off, at least in my experiment so far. But uh, you know, just watch the the hyperparameter, or you know, watch the loss that comes out, and to, and play with the hyperparameters to get it right. But uh, I'm not sure how much mm -hmm. more I'm going to do on it. It's been it's been interesting. Uh, it's just it turned out well. I, the thing that I was trying to find out today, I'd love to. I was I was there was a great mm -hmm. paper that OpenAI just released that kind of uh, unrolled. Uh, What's in a network, right? What's in a convolutional mm. network to mm. show the pieces? Yeah, I think I've I, I think I've seen you know a tweet about that. And I would love I I I, I didn't look very well. But it was a great paper because it really they, they had an example, and I've I've seen situations like this where uh, uh, they had an example where they had a, a fin sticking out of water, and it would identify it as a shark. But if mm -hmm. they inserted a picture of a baseball. And it would determine. It would say, "No, that's a whale, right?" So, so somewhere mm. there was a, uh, or maybe it was a locomotive. That's it. So somewhere there was a, there was there was kind of a crossover for that. But it, it, they were able to literally go through the various layers in the network and identify, uh, you know, the different uh, features that it had, that it had the relationship between the features that it had. Mm. So yeah, for me, I, I. Uh, I, I'd, I'd love to be able to visualize the features in this network, uh, just because there are some interesting, there, there's still some interesting artifacts that pop up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've been to talking like before we began the recording of you know of, of just you know recapping all the stuff I've been and, I, and I've been saying how I'm building build, I'm building like an Android app that uses a lot of computer vision and one maybe problem with Yolo is that. I don't know, and maybe I, I, I'm just wonder. I'm just asking for like an advice. Yeah. Uh, the, like one of the problems is speed. Is that the, the big yellow is like twenty seconds on my Android device, and the tiny yellow is much better. It's just two seconds. Yeah. But you know, I was just wondering whether like the whether like you've learned something that's quicker with ResNet or something, you know, or more ResNet. accurate, or just. You know, just, just the reasons why you like walked away from Yolo in general. You know, uh, ResNet is not. It's kind of. It, it's not super fast. Uh, it's more. You know, I get about uh, uh, one recognition. About about half a second recognition time. Mm -hmm. So I can process. You know, about. You know, about two frames per second, roughly. Uh, which is which is reasonably good for what I've been doing. Uh, it's certainly mm -hmm. uh, you know it certainly could be faster. With it's it's number. it's on it's on GPU right? Yeah, on the GPU on the deep lens exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, if I uh, if I ran it, you still there? Hey, uh, yeah. hey there. Yes. Okay. I'm back. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there. Oh well, so much. much for Skype reliability. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, th th that was like destined to happen. I mean, yeah, you know, you're always. always saying. But you know, so uh, I think the the uh, I think Yolo is uh, so no, I, I'm not. Uh, I ResNet is fifty is is about all this device can handle at that throughput. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to, you know, I'd, I'd love to get you know higher throughput, but uh, I think 
if YOLO were optimized, if Darknet were optimized to run on this Intel GPU, yeah. I, I'm I feel sure it would run twice as fast. I, I don't think ResNet would, ResNet this ResNet uh, model would run very well at all on uh, on Android. Uh, mm. So uh, yeah, it, it the nice thing is with uh, even for local processing like I was doing uh, in that video that I ran is just a test uh, uh, that runs on a GPU on my uh, on my laptop. So uh, and, and again it, it runs pretty fast, but it's mm-hmm. uh, uh, I I think in a similar test on uh, using uh, uh, Darknet, I think Darknet was probably twice as fast. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, who, the guy who, I mean, Eddie or whoever, the guy, guy that wrote that thing, man, what a, what a C programmer. Mm-hmm. He, uh, I think that was Joseph uh, Redman who, who brought Darknet and Yellow and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I've yeah. seen I've seen his his TED talks. He's a he's a cool guy, and he's got a he's got a cool cool beard, <laughs> also like. <laughs> I yeah. think he may I think he may actually be in Seattle. I'm not sure. I think mm. maybe maybe I'm wrong. I I thought he was uh. Uh, I thought he was in uh, maybe at um, UW, University of Washington, I, but I think I rem- was- yeah, yeah, University of Washington. That was in his paper, in, in, yeah. or in his CV, or something like that. Yeah. I remember reading through it. No, oh, I, yeah, I, I wish they would put. I, I wish they would put Darknet on. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take the effort. It's been a long time since I programmed in C, mm-hmm. uh, but I think it would run awesome on. Uh, on the one you needed, you know, I think it would run awesome on an embedded device or on these edge devices. Uh, it's just so blooming efficient. Mm-hmm. Uh, the problem is, uh, is the Uh-oh. Did we just have another network hang up? No, no. It, oh, okay. Is, is it the case? Yeah. All of a sudden. <laughs> okay. I mean, it happens from time to time, you know. I mean, I mean, after all, like we're on the opposite side, opposite sides of the world, you know, like. So, like like who could think we would be able to even talk like 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 that? Like I don't know, thirty years ago, like some sci-fi movies or something. I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and so you're saying like the problem with uh, optimizations that Yolo is not very optimized to like run on uh, deep lenses or something like that, or no, or... no. it just huh? hasn't been. No, it's very optimized, but it hasn't oh. been. It just hasn't been uh, ported to run on whatever. I can I think. I, to run on the GPU that there, mm. I couldn't find an implementation that ran on the GPU that the deep lens uh, 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 runs. I, 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 I know mm-hmm. they use some some kind of a, ah, a okay. extraction layer, but I, I was just, okay. I think if I remember right, early on I compiled it, I, I built it, and I tried to get you know I tried to build it for a, for a GPU. But it, it was just running against the CPU, and it's just an atom processor, so it's not real. It, you know, but the processor on the device isn't very powerful. If there would be one that was uh, that was that was impl- if it was implemented on top of the the GPU in there, it would scream. Mm, yeah, I can see what you're saying. Like Yolo works with like CUDA and you know Nvidia yeah. GPUs. Yeah, but like not really with the Intel ones. I mean, in my case, uh, I haven't like. Uh, and AMD GPU, so it's like no use for. The, I mean, my, my PC is pretty old, and I have an AMD GPU, so like uh, my my working horse is like the CPU on my computer. So it's kind of how I you know started off, and I was like running. Uh, basically, I run yellow through OpenCV, and yeah. you know they're like you know do you know like DNN module, and it, they yeah. they've like got uh, you know a lot of ways to like and to like run a lot of neural networks and that's basically the way I do things in Android. Uh, it's been, so it's been, open CV. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Like, uh, at first when me and my friend like started off, we've had like the whole project in Python. Uh, I mean, that was, that's like a funny story. Like we were started off. I was like experimenting with, uh, you know, computer vision. He was, he, he's a, a really good, she's like real good at like algorithms and, uh, like, uh, he's he's just a very very talented programmer, and I was like, hey, like, do you want like I'm just having this idea, like, let's do something for like visually impaired people, like, let's uh, have a conversation and display the information that they can't get, like, otherwise. He was like, sure. And our first iteration of the project was, we basically had my friend's laptop that had like Python installed, 
and like my part of the code was in Python, and then when I like would process the image, it would call an uh, exe file that was written in C sharp <laughs> by my friend. <laughs> so we had like that sandwich with uh, yeah. programming like Python on top of so, or C sharp on top of yeah. Python, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, we we presented presented that like at a local student student conference. Like like that that was a lot of fun. We didn't win back then, but like the uh, the vision was always to like move the things tor towards Android. Uh, yeah, now the app's working, but before I like got to work, I mean, I mean, our first attempts were we, we, we like uh, I tried to work with Kiwi. Uh, have you heard about it? Uh, it's like a way to you know do apps in Python. Um, it was it worked for simple apps, but when I tried to like install OpenCV version three there, or you know it was just it, I mean like how do I say this? Uh, the 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 deeper we like dig into the whole thing, the more I understand that like Kiwi would have been like just just it just wouldn't have worked like yeah, yeah so. We've had like a deadline for the next conference. We've had like a week and a half or something. We, we learned Android Studio like basically in a week and a half. I had to move from Python to Java. Uh, oh my god! Like that, like that was not you know. I'm not used to like typing those brackets and stuff. Uh, but yeah, like the thing that saved you know my ass basically uh, was that OpenCV worked with Java and it still took you know a lot of iterations to like even get the whole thing to work but once you know you can understand the basic Java syntax and it's it's like it's still OpenCV like there are still like the same modules you can basically start translating your code yeah. you know a lot of Google and a lot of Stack Overflow but so the, now with Java it's all environment man that's the, the to me that's the hard part to get the environment right but yeah you should, yeah. your Python would translate pretty straight yeah, and my friend now like handles. Uh, she's like digging. Uh, I'm I'm like focusing on neural net, and she's like focusing on m making the app optimized, like doing like the threads and the yeah. interface, and like uh, we have like a funny back. Uh, we have like both the big yellow and the tiny yellow in the app, and uh, when you like start computing like the big yellow and an image from 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 the cam and. You you abort it and you try to do the tiny yellow like I've just had the in, like the instant like literally like yesterday, um, and then you launch like the tiny yellow. What happens is that uh, it basically like starts telling you like it it just like the whole screen like gets covered with the rectangles that it finds yeah. something and then. Uh, my phone basically started telling me that, like, I see a zebra, I see a giraffe, like, in my bedroom, you know, of course. <laughs> and, like, there are cars, and there's, like, everything, and my phone, you know, crashed. And so, yeah, there are a lot of bugs, but, like, with each version, it's, like, getting better. I mean, I'll probably find a way to, like, show you the app. Uh, yeah. It's working. It, it, it doesn't have the bus integrated in that in a smart way yet, but all the basic stuff it's got. English, uh... uh What's like the proper word for like uh, the English voiceover, the English sounding? Like, how do you say that? It's got the like it can it can speak in English language, you know? Uh, it does. You mean it uh, they text? It does uh, uh, text to speech. It does. It, 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 so you is it is it giving you uh, uh, audio? Uh, yes. Is it giving you uh, so audio. So it's doing text to speech or or basically an audio uh, prompt. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, it's for the visually impaired people, so uh, it's basically, you know, we have, like, four big buttons, and it, everything's, like, pretty intuitive, like, whenever you uh, push a button, it'll, it'll say that, like, uh, push the button, there will be, like, a vi vibration, so we're, like, trying to make it as, uh, as, as, as intuitive and as, uh, you know, simple nice. to use. We're gonna, That's we're right. gonna... So the, so the idea is, basically, you know, I'm visually impaired, I I I I'm able to hold mm -hmm. the phone up and it'll tell me this is this is the bus number yeah. two hundred and or the doors yeah. open on bus number two hundred. Neat. Yeah, the idea is to basically try to um, try to kind of give the information that a visually impaired person can just get, and this may include like for instance like writing a yellow for instance in a room that where you like have never been like okay like there are two fridges there's an there's a stuff like okay this must be a kitchen you know yeah. or 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 for instance like you're i don't know walking down the street or like standing there 
and you want to like ask somebody for help or you know something you can just see okay like i see that there are like two people standing there okay and, uh, yeah just being able to find a street number i mean i, I guess you know you get you've got gps and stuff yeah like gps that. Yeah, uh, the main focus, I think there are uh, like a lot of apps that can do like with the GPS, but you know, I guess the problem is basically, is, for instance, when you're like waiting for buses to figure out uh, like where the bus is like visually, because the GPS may be telling you like there are, I'm sure like there are those cloud servers like all over the world, like we have those in Russia, um, that will tell you basically like here's the bus, it like came to this bus stop, but you kind of still have to know where it's like relative to you and whether it's like your bus, yep. and like even if uh, even if you still, even if you like still may want to ask somebody for help, that like, that would be just useful if you could just say like hey like that's my bus there like number thirteen or number fifteen or whatever, or or you know division is you know since it can say whether the doors are open or closed like maybe there could be a way to like allow people to get in the bus themselves yeah that's that's that is such a neat application that's a clever well yeah. at one point you were trying to recognize uh crosswalks as well right yeah yeah i i i remember sharing with you um that's you know the app works like we have like those we call them scenarios like they're one that you want to like look around or the bus one um, that's like the future one, and it's now uh, I've I've basically like, focused on the buses. But yeah, it's like the next thing that we would like to implement is to, I mean, it's possible to detect a uh, traffic light. It's possible to detect a zebra. It's possible to uh, see whether like there are people walking in that direction, like whether there are like people there and whether there are no cars. So uh, I don't know. I guess visually impaired people they I mean. The traffic lights, I mean, some of the traffic lights here, I'm sure you have that too, like they do that, those beeping sounds when uh, the, you know, the green light is on. But yeah, if we can like say that, like there are also people walking down that way and there are no cars, like this can kind of, uh, this can improve the level of like safety that you can make a more like comfortable decision. And of course, you know, when you use the app, you would like to keep at least one of your ears, you know, you would like to plug out the headphone because yeah. you know hearing have is still you, like super have, great have, have you been able to uh, have any people who are visually impaired try try your app so far we're like right now we're in the process of negotiating like uh, the first tests with that's great local people yeah super exciting uh yeah like, but there's you know a lot of work to make it better and we didn't even come close to figure out how to like deploy it all on google play store and all that but yeah, like the fundamentals are there. Like, like as you've seen, you know, the it's possible to detect the bounding box of a number, and it's possible to then classify the number and it's possible to detect buses. Like, like yeah, there are problems that it sometimes think that buildings are buses, but you know, if we like, uh, basically have the frames go in, you know, if we just say that. I mean, in order in order to say that there is a bus, you have to like see that there is a bus at least for like two or three frames or something like there are, yeah. ways, there are you know ways to d deal with it do you maybe do, are there maybe you know as i've been talking maybe there is like there are like some ideas that popped into your head of like what can we like do maybe better like something i, I think you're doing the right thing i, I do think that do, that that taking uh that looking across multiple frames you know mm -hmm. that way you 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 have a really high confidence if 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 two out of the last if, if three out of the last three frames say you know there's a bus right then mm -hmm. you you're probably looking at a bus so uh uh but no it, it sure sounds like you guys are doing one the number one thing is find you know let some people who are visually impaired yeah. tell you what doesn't work it's a may it's very humbling too but uh but that you'll learn a hell of a lot from what works for them uh yeah i, I was yeah that, that I, i'll i'll be what one thing that i'll be curious if in your testing how it works in uh lower light conditions for me mm. that's one of the things that i pull my hair out with and, and obviously around buses there's there's some there there'll be some lighting so people can see but uh but you may have to you may mm -hmm. have to play around with either some uh uh mm -hmm. some processing you know locally to uh increase the contrast mm. or maybe you may have to load in some if you don't have some in your data cell already, you may need some lower light, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, situations because 
it's amazing, you know, how we we feed it, we feed these neural networks perfect images, and then we try to use it in the wild, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it doesn't always work so well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I guess I that like could be a, a problem because you know, most of the like I guess all of the images are in the daylight in 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 the Coco data set and in the images that I took, so like that could be a problem. Do you think okay. there are like I mean, I mean, maybe there could be some pre-processing way when you like kind of try to estimate the amount of light in an image, then you kind of try to adjust that, like some gamma, you know, something. Yeah. You could definitely, you could definitely look at the overall intensity of the image, right, and use mm -hmm. that as a and and raise it or lower it. But uh, mm -hmm. you might also try, uh, you know, just take some some of your test images and. Uh, and reduce the intensity. You know, you know, just you do it in an editor mm. even just for test to, to and just just to see that might, you know, that again uh, the it just seems like uh, the all the training images that I found were like perfect images, and mm -hmm. I'm not recognizing perfect images. So that'll be I'll, I'll be curious how that goes for you. Yeah, I mean, I'm basically I'm 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 already like using your script to. Uh, mirrors the images, so like that helps. And I guess uh, I could try to like take that next level and do some more data uh, augmentation. Um, and yeah, you, must, the, huh? you must Sorry? you must stay pretty busy between school and programming and your podcast. This <laughs> takes oh. a lot of time. Oh my god! Uh, I'm not doing that well at school. I'm 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 kind of checked out. I mean, I'm 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 coming there and I'm. But most of the times I'm just doing enough to pass. It's it's, it's not the funniest thing, you know. And it's fun to hang out, hang out with, hang out with people, with like friends and all that. But you know, to be honest, I'm I'm not the best student ever. Just <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, I'll I'll probably be a pretty good student. Like I, I can I can learn things, but when it's something I like don't care about, it, I'm 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 really not the best student. Just, uh, I know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not proud of that. It's yeah. kind of just the way I roll. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I can learn online. Like, like there are valuable things in school. Like, uh, I mean, maybe you have like opinions on that too. Like socialize and, you know, some teachers and some subjects they're like super interesting and like useful. And some things, they're maybe super great and useful for other people that may not work all that well for me. So I'm just trying to do what works for me. Yeah. And so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I fail exams and I have to redo them. Like recently that happened, but uh, most of the time, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm learning about myself and learning what works for me. And yeah. like, yeah. Uh, it's, that's, that's life, man. No, I, uh, I, 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 the ability to now go online and watch, you know, not one, but like one of 20 YouTube videos about any topic you want to learn is amazing. Mm -hmm. I, to me, I still can't imagine learning, you know, learning literature and you know, or learning, you know, grammar and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. that that's, that's just the, man, that's just boring stuff. But yeah, to me it was, but got to have it to be able to function. But yeah, learning that online would be, would, I, I guess it would be just about as boring online as it is. But man, for so many things, the like math or science, the the visualizations are so much better than what you can get out of a book. I I I I I, 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 I I'm just amazed at what uh, at the quality mm -hmm. that people produce, you know, online about any topic yeah. you want to learn. So. Uh, have you seen Three Blue One Brown YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's super. Next level, just it, it, crazy. it is so well done. No, I, 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 I've seen and I've watched a number of their videos. I think, uh, uh, Send, Syntex is that his name? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Syntex. Uh, yeah, yeah, man alive. He is he's prolific. I can't imagine. And, and Siraj, right? He, he has yeah. some videos out there too. Uh, the, the quality, I mean, one you don't, mm -hmm. don't take a lot to produce a video these days, but it still takes somebody who's willing to put in the time to cover the material and uh, it's, it's it's super mm -hmm. yeah it really challenges you know if you know it's tough if you're a teacher today you need to be as entertaining as a youtube video yeah 
yeah I, I don't know I mean I mean I've had you know like real good teachers that like life-changing teachers you know whom I like still have a like, great relationship like uh, they are you know not te- teaching my school anymore but we were like still you know we've like literally hang- hanged out like a week ago or something and you know other teachers they're, they're like good they may just not work for me as well or you know whatever yeah but the amount of stuff that you can learn on YouTube again it's it, it all comes I'm, I'm sure like there there are you know people who go to school and you know when somebody tells them something it works for them like that's cool and but yeah definitely like i would have like i don't know i wouldn't have like built an app or like learned anything at all like if it wasn't for like the you know like i wonder um when you were like starting out programming and like 99 you know obviously you know there weren't much sendexes and three blue one browns and sirages back th- back then well what was it like you know, uh, it, it was you. You learn. You. I mean, there there wasn't videos, all that, right? You learn from you. Know, you. When I was lucky, I got to learn from some really smart, mm-hmm. senior people, right? And you know, and it's about you know learning from your mistakes all the time. Yeah, we. You know, my I programmed and learned to program in C in the in the in the early '80s, and mm-hmm. uh, you know the 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 nice thing was. You know, there was you had to learn you had to learn Unix and Unix was simple and you had mm-hmm. to learn C and it was in a mm-hmm. little white book by you know, it was before ANSI C right and 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 everything else you know you pretty much learn from uh, from somebody else so uh, uh, and and you know the one thing I laugh at the number of distractions that we have today while you're mm-hmm. trying to program or something you know you got two or three instant messengers you've got you know, mm-hmm. a video chat, you know, a chat going, you've got, you might have, uh, you might have Slack or Skype or something like that. You know, the one thing about, you know, programming, when I started in, in college and all that, you know, about all you might get is an email. <laughs> you know, there, there's no instant messenger, there's no cell phone, there's no YouTube. So uh, I don't know that we program a whole lot, uh, a whole lot uh, faster. I felt like it was easier to concentrate, but no, uh, mm-hmm. today, the ability to assimilate new languages or new or, or frameworks or whatever, just you know, from you know, down you know, watch the video, click the link, download it from Git, and 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 try it out. Just awesome. Yeah, it must have been like I don't know. Uh, yeah, but about about the like distractions and yeah, it's probably like. It's probably like really true, you know. You you go on YouTube to learn something, and like there's a recommendation bar. There's there there are like some video, uh, you know, some 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 entertainment and stuff. Uh, well, that's it. I, I mean, everybody I know has Twitter open on one screen and 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 the code open on the other screen, and you know the uh, the, the uh, it kind of breaks. It, well, you have to really you have to yeah. really learn how to concentrate in that environment. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you can like write some like routine stuff that way, but if you're like trying to come up with something new, like it requires you know hundred percent you know focus and that yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I was. I, I guess like if you were starting out to program like these days, like you you definitely go into AI. Yeah, you know it's to me or to me. It's just a matter of mm. fi- follow what you're interested in, right? Mm-hmm. And just dump in the deep end, you know. But to me, there's very, there, you know, I think that you know, you could be a good programmer today and not know anything about AI, and, mm-hmm. and you know, but mm. but the type of problems that you can solve, it's just one more tool that you can mm-hmm. deploy, and it's a really powerful tool. And I mm-hmm. think if you're not familiar with it, people tend to solve problems based on the the you know based on their past you know based on the tools they have available mm-hmm. and it's a hell of a tool not to be mm. not available so you know i i think i think you know if you if, if you're starting a project or st- trying to solve a problem and you don't think well you know could i trade could could this be solved by a neural network i think you're kind of you're 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 ignoring a, a large chunk of technology now that doesn't mean everything right sometimes you just need logic right you don't need a neural network but uh but man alive it's a powerful tool to be able to deploy 
and yeah. to be able to literally, you know, with some of the packages that are available today, it, man, it makes it easy. But just NumPy by itself, wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, it just, you, you have, I mean, the amount of, of, of processing you can do with just NumPy is amazing mm -hmm. right with just a you know a couple of lines of code in python you you, you can literally write neural networks in yeah, numpy exactly yeah i've been doing that when i was like starting out it's yep it's it's it's, it's, it's awesome i don't know <laughs> yeah me and my friend actually you know like that's kind of where we you know get together i guess like i do neural nets and he does like really really good stuff with algorithms like threads and he like Really, I mean, we both, I guess, understand a little bit of each, but you know, really, you know, try to try to kind of, as you were like saying, you know, uh, like one quarter is not enough. Like, like when a team comes together, like the uh, the level, like the scope, I don't know, of things that they can accomplish, like it just yeah. increases different, tremendously. Yeah. Uh, different, you get people trying to solve the problem from different angles, and yeah, it's it's. Uh, it can be real interesting to understand how somebody else sees it and, and how they solve. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, I'm just wondering, like, what are the things that you like to do uh, outside of programming? Like, maybe you know, some some funny stuff. I don't know. Oh, I love the outdoors. I, I have a boat. I love to go boating. We're mm. we're we're not far from uh, the Puget Sound. Uh, got a four-wheel drive, so I like to go out in my Jeep and have fun, uh, enjoy traveling. I have a, a you know family, wife and two daughters, so we mm. uh, do all kind of. We stay busy. Yeah, I try to, you know, I I I, I it, I'm happy sitting behind a computer, but if I can close the computer, I'm happy to be out somewhere. So uh, 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 just just uh, outdoors or you know you know music or otherwise. So just mm -hmm. you know pretty much. Uh, I, I don't have any other big, big hobby, but uh, but I s certainly enjoy being on the water and mm. uh, or being on the trails. So uh, and you know it's also pretty fun to. Uh, well, I, I love ethnic food, so you know mm. that's we live in an area that's got, God, you know we got we have hundred. There must be between just because of Microsoft, there must be a hundred different ethnic ethnic restaurants around here. Mm. That, and you you never you, you never uh, you never run out of uh, fun spicy food to eat. <laughs> yeah, I I, lo I love how there's as well. You know, I I I, I uh, me and my friends like go camping from time to time, and also like as I've I've shown you like the outside. Like uh, in summer, there are a lot of you know places you can go here in terms of like nature, and and even in the winter, like I've been recently like doing some skiing. Like like dune skin here is, is pretty pretty great because you know basically everything is like covered with deep deep snow so you can like walk but you can ski and it's kind of nice. Yeah, um, you were mentioning that you like music. Like, do you like playing play an instrument or? Oh, not no. I'm not. I I like listening to. I'm, ah, I okay. I learned in uh, I learned in in elementary school that <laughs> I'm not very musical. Tried to learn how to play, but yeah, no. Uh, but uh, but no, I'm 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 happy to play music on my Alexa. <laughs> oh, I mean, why why not? Uh, I can like sing like really, but I play the fill just just you know something I learned over like YouTube and stuff. Not not great like not like great, but you know some Irish music, some bluegrass, some fun stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. No, I, really I, I, nice. was, I try to learn how to play the guitar. I I, I play the saxophone badly. Oh. But uh, I try to learn how to play the guitar, and I just I, I learned from a guy, or my friend was teaching me, and he was real musical. I mean, and I, at that point, I realized, I mean, he could, you know, he could he he he, he had like perfect pitch or whatever they call it, but he could play pretty much any instrument. And at that mm. point, I realized this is a gift that I just don't have. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I wonder, and and, and so uh, you've mentioned that you've been uh, that you've retired, right, uh, from companies and stuff. Partially, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Till partially. I get, uh, till I get too bored. <laughs> <laughs> and so, mm, like, what it's like, uh, like I guess, I guess it's 
kind of, you know, you have a lot of things to do and then suddenly you have not that much things to do, or at least a thing that you, like, have to do or you still probably find, you know, things to do. No, it's, it's, it, it's nice to be able to have, you know, the last time I had this much free time I was in college, oh. <laughs> right? So, uh, no, it's, it's nice to be able to do what you want to do to travel or, or, or you know, geek out on a problem. So, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. But you, at some point you also look at it and say, well, is, you know, you want to keep, you want to keep doing interesting stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's interesting, that's, that's nice. And, and maybe, and maybe, you know, if you were like now, not like, not necessarily like entering like some fields, but if you were like thinking of, um, I'm, I'm maybe like partially asking for myself, I don't know, like for fields that would be like exciting or like interesting, like do you like, where would you, I don't know, look at or, you know, what would you, maybe, you know, it's, things to work on, like not necessarily in AI or, you know, yeah, whatever. I, to me, genetics is fascinating, what mm. they're doing with, uh, with uh, gene editing and CRISPR, right, the ability, you know, there's a whole lot more that we need to understand about, uh, about the genome, but they're starting to you know, to literally be able to crack the crack the genome and edit it. That's to me, that's just mm -hmm. the, the genetics are just fascinating. But, you know, the uh, almost any job to me, you know, AI is just a technology, but mm -hmm. it, it's going to be applicable to just about any domain. Right. You know, whether you're you know, whether you're in sales or marketing or whatever. Right. So that you're not going to be able to escape, you know, technology. Uh, in pretty much any field, but you know the uh, I, I always I always believe that the most interesting jobs are the ones that don't have titles, right? That mm. that, that are that are that are in between two fields, mm -hmm. right? A applying you know applying technology to you know to biology or you know whatever. So uh, that, those are the those are the ones that to me, you know those are the you know yeah. It, it'll be real interesting to see you know what job you know, again you know. Ten, you know, five or eight years ago, you wouldn't see anybody doing container development. Well, now, you know, but with with containers and with microservices, you know, those are you know, you have this whole new, uh, you know, this this whole level of abstraction that you can build on top of to build new solutions. So, uh, mm. I just think, yeah, I, I just think across the board, the you know, technology will continue to do. I, I think what was it? Uh, Mark Andreessen said uh, or the uh, the the what was it software software eight or the cloud eight software or something like that. I mean the the eating continues right as more as we get these this infrastructure you know where literally you you know for pennies a day you can run services and the amount of technology that that's going to that that'll be developed and 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 into and extended to different domains is you know it's we're just starting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. Uh... In biology, like, have you heard, like, there were, like, some already, like, some CRISPR experiments, you know, like, in China or something, like, they claim to have, you know, edited some genes in babies and they're, like, HIV immune or something, you know, yeah, I mean, one of the things that, like, initially excited me was, you know, AI in, like, medicine and how that can be, like, personalized medicine, like, the kind that, you know, and I guess there's already, like, some progress there, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure like you've heard, you know, AI that can uh, classify or like, detect skin cancer and like that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, they, the, the, to me, as those become normal tools for doctors, right, they're not going to, you know, it just, it just opens up more. I mean, if you think about it today, for most, well, for, for, for the last 200 years, you know, doctors, you know, they, you know, you know the, the number one the things they looked at when they checked your health what's your blood pressure what's your temperature what's your heart rate uh and you know a couple of other things or and mm -hmm. and now right i mean just with those they could do a, make a lot of diagnoses but now you know, one and obviously they can do blood tests and all that stuff but now you know the number the amount of data that they can collect from you you know through an apple watch right mm. you know they, they they can get an electrocardiogram. You know, they it the amount of data that they can, real time data that they can have access to, not just when you're in the office, is astounding. So the the opportunity to to have uh, to to have a much greater impact on somebody's health, I think, is amazing. Right? You literally have your know, real time monitoring of 
you know, of, of your blood pressure, or of your temperature, or of your calorie consumption, or anything else. It's just truly amazing. And uh, that'll, you know, even, even, you know, even if somebody who's a, you know, a doctor today, they better be very technology savvy. Mm-hmm. Because they're going to be using it. It's doing its yeah. thing again. They, like I said, not bad for around the world connection. <laughs> yeah, not bad, not bad at, at all. I mean, the, the internet connection here is it's, well, hey, it's, I've, I've really enjoyed catching up, but it's getting kind of late here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, and we're also hitting like two hours. Yeah, I guess we can wrap up here. You know, it's it's been it's been my pleasure. You know, we've talked about a lot of interesting things. I like shake your hands virtually, and uh, <laughs> yeah, not bad for the internet connection. Sure. Yep. So hey. yeah, I really really love doing this, man. Like, really appreciate you stopping it by. Was, yeah. It was fun. Chatting after all this time, exchanging yeah. messages. I'm I'm excited to see the next iteration of your app. Yeah, thank you, man. Like we're we, we gotta do it again sometime. You know. All good, right. Good, good, good talking to you, man. Yeah, all good right. talking Have to you, Lars. Thanks for being here. Thanks for doing sure. this. Bye, bye, and good night. <laughs>